We're diving into a scientific finding today that's uh, really making paleoanthropologists grab their, well, maybe not white out, but definitely rethink some core ideas about human history. We're talking about a skull, an old kind of distorted skull found decades ago in China that's just had a high-tech facelift. And that facelift, that tech intervention, it's huge. Because this skull, Yangtzean II, it's now challenging pretty much everything we thought we knew about the human evolution timeline. We might be pushing the split between us, modern humans, and our closest relatives back by, well, hundreds of thousands of years. Wow, okay, so this skull was found in Hubei Province, China, way back in 1990. That's right, 1990. And for years, it sort of sat there. Interesting, sure, but incredibly difficult to analyze properly because it was so damaged. Right. But now, thanks to this new research just published in the journal Science, its real significance is uh, finally coming to light. Okay, so our mission today, let's unpack this. We need to get into how this tech brought a million-year-old fossil back to life, virtually speaking. Uh-huh. And what it might mean for those mysterious Denisovans. And also why, you know, a big discovery like this always needs a healthy dose of skepticism. Absolutely. Okay, let's unpack this. Starting with that 30-year delay, found in 1990, why is it only now becoming a game changer? Well, the core problem was basically geology and physics. When they found Yangtzean II, it was badly crushed, squashed flat by the sediments over a million years. Right, like imagine stepping on a, I don't know, a piece of fruit. Exactly, think of a watermelon being squashed. The overall shape is just gone, distorted. So traditional measurements, pretty unreliable. For decades, the best they could really do was label it vaguely. Usually got lumped in as some kind of homo erectus. Okay, so enter modern tech. How did it solve this uh, squashed watermelon problem? They used some really advanced digital reconstruction techniques, yeah. specifically high resolution CT scanning. Okay, CT scans like in a hospital? Sort of, but much higher resolution. It's not just a picture. It's like taking millions of tiny digital slices through the fossil. Thin layers, okay. What does slicing it digitally show you that you can't just see? It lets you map the internal structure, the density of the bone, its thickness, even though it's crushed, the bone material itself hasn't fundamentally changed in those properties. So using that internal map, researchers could digitally unsquash it. They could model how the bone should have curved before it got distorted. Wow. Yeah, basically removing the geological damage virtually to reveal the uh, the true shape underneath. That's incredible. You're essentially giving the skull its original 3D form back. And the dating on this thing is solid. It's really that old. Oh yeah. The dating puts it firmly between 940,000 and 1.1 million years old, mm. right in the early to middle Pleistocene, which, you know, is a really pivotal, but also kind of confusing time for hominin evolution, especially in Asia. Okay, so assuming the reconstruction holds up, the new identity they're proposing for Yangtzean too, that's the real bombshell here. It's not just Homo erectus anymore. No, the new hypothesis is pretty dramatic. They're suggesting Yangtzean II could be the oldest identified member of the evolutionary line leading to Denisovans and also Homo longi. Okay, just a quick reminder for everyone listening. Denisovans are super enigmatic, right? Yeah. We mostly know them from tiny bits of genetic material, like from a finger bone, not many actual skulls. Precisely. Which makes finding a potential ancestor skull like Yangtzean II a massive deal. And Homo longi, the dragon man, that's another fairly recent find, isn't it? A big, robust skull from China. That's the one from Harbin. So what this new study suggests is a really deep, established evolutionary branch in East Asia that we just hadn't documented properly before. That's a huge claim from a digital model, though. Yeah. I mean, after 30 years of calling it Homo erectus, what specific features you call them mosaic features did the reconstruction actually reveal that made them rethink it so drastically? Well, yeah, mosaic is the key word. The features don't fit neatly into our old boxes. So compared to classic Asian Homo erectus, like say, Peking Man, Yangtzean II does share that archaic feature of a really thick brow ridge. Okay, which points towards H erectus. Right. Normally it would, but where a typical H. erectus has a pretty robust angled skull shape, Yangtzean II, even at a million years old, shows a couple of striking, more advanced traits. Like what? First, its cranial capacity seems relatively large, bigger brain volume than may be expected for that age. And second, maybe the most critical part, its face seems relatively flatter, less projecting. Hmm. Why is a flatter face such a big deal? Because flatter faces are generally linked to later hominins. Think Neanderthals, Denisovans, even early Homo sapiens. Finding that kind of trait in a million-year-old skull, 
along with the larger brain capacity. Well, it argues pretty strongly that this isn't your standard Homo erectus. It looks more like something transitional, something already branching off towards those later archaic humans we see in the Middle Pleistocene. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting then. This mix of old and new traits leads straight to this evolutionary earthquake. If Youngxian 2 is potentially an ancestor to Denisovans and Dragoman, how far back does that push the whole branching point in the human family tree? The implication is uh, pretty stunning, actually. The analysis suggests that the key split, the divergence between the line leading to us, Homo sapiens, and the line leading to our close archaic cousins like Neanderthals and Denisovans, yeah. that split might be pushed back by at least 400,000, maybe even 500,000 years. Half a million years. Yeah. So instead of thinking that split happened around, say, 600,000 years ago, we might need to be looking at over a million years ago. Wow. Based on one reconstructed skull, that's that's huge. What does that revision actually do for scientists, apart from just changing the dates? Does it solve any existing puzzles? It does, actually. It helps address what researchers sometimes call the muddle in the middle of human evolution. The muddle in the middle. Sounds messy. It kind of is. It's roughly the period between, say, 700,000 and maybe 100,000 years ago. It's marked by all these scattered, often incomplete fossils across Eurasia that are really hard to classify neatly. We haven't really known who was related to whom or who was the direct ancestor of later groups. Like a big, confusing traffic jam of different hominin types? Exactly. And Youngxian 2 suggests maybe that scattering wasn't just random noise. Maybe it reflects an incredibly complex and uh, rapid period of diversification. This finding points pretty strongly towards East Asia being a major center for archaic human evolution, sort of independent long before Homo sapiens showed up there. So putting Youngxian 2 together with Homo longi, it starts to paint a picture where East Asia wasn't just a place Homo erectus ended up, but an actual evolutionary incubator. That seems to be the emerging picture, yes. These fossils, possibly with Youngxian 2 as a very early example, suggest a really significant and successful branching of hominins in Asia. And that branch seems to have contributed profoundly to the Denisovan lineage and maybe even influenced Neanderthals further west later on. And there's more potentially coming. You mentioned another skull. That's right. They actually found a third skull, Youngxian 3, at the same site back in 2022. Analysis on that is ongoing, so we expect even more insights soon. Okay, that context is vital. But let's uh, pump the brakes a little. We're talking about rewriting a million years of history based on a digital reconstruction of a really damaged fossil. I mean, a finding this big has to attract some serious skepticism, right? How solid is this claim when you look at the counter argument? Oh, absolutely. Skepticism is crucial here, and it's definitely present. The main scientific uncertainty really comes down to that reliance on technology to infer the original shape. You have to remember, the fossil record from this middle Pleistocene period is sparse. It's fragmented everywhere, so any interpretation, especially of a damaged fossil, relies heavily on certain assumptions. Right. And if the skull was crushed flat, surely how you uncrush it digitally depends a bit on what you expect it to look like, how you model the curves. That's precisely the challenge. The authors of the study themselves acknowledge this. They're quite transparent that the conclusions depend on the assumptions made during reconstruction. You know, if you assume certain areas should curve this way, you get one result. Assume they curve that way, you might get something slightly different. Quality of preservation matters hugely. So that's where the debate gets heated. Defining that line between necessary digital repair and maybe digital wishful thinking. Exactly. It's about how much is reconstruction versus interpretation. Some paleoanthropologists definitely worry the findings might be, let's say, overinterpreted, given the state of the original fossil. What are their main points against just accepting Youngxian 2 as this new lineage ancestor? Well, there are a couple of key concerns. First, the genetic evidence we have, which remember is mostly from much later fossils, doesn't necessarily line up perfectly with such an early Asia-based origin for the Denisovan line. Genetics suggests one timeline, this morphology is pushing it earlier. Hmm, okay, genetics versus bones, what else? Second, there's just the inherent difficulty of classifying these fossils at all. We keep finding more evidence of morphological overlap, shared traits between different species, you know, Homo erectus, Homo longi, early Denisovans, or their ancestors. They share a lot of general features. Yeah. So assigning one fragmented skull definitively to a specific new lineage, it's really tough. So the fundamental question becomes, is Youngxian 2 genuinely a distinct earlier branch leading towards Denisovans? Right. Or 
Could it just be natural variation within the known range of Homo erectus? Maybe just an individual that happened to have a slightly bigger brain and flatter face than usual. That's the absolute core of the disagreement. And this raises an important question, especially now with digital methods becoming so powerful. How much weight do we give to the physical evidence, the bits we can actually touch, versus the digitally inferred evidence we create to fill in those million-year-old gaps left by geology? Yeah, that's a critical point for you, the listener, to hold on to. Yeah. We've got this million-year-old fossil brought back to life by amazing tech, forcing us to consider a much earlier, more complex human story in Asia. But at the same time, the very technology that makes this possible is also the source of the deepest questions and skepticism. Exactly. Ultimately, I think Youngxian 2 really forces us to let go of any simple, linear, out of Africa and then everyone else model. It confirms the Middle Pleistocene was incredibly complex, a time of mosaic evolution with lots of different evolutionary experiments happening across the old world, especially in Asia. The human story is just much, much bushier than we used to think. And we're clearly nowhere near finished figuring out how all those branches connected or why some died out and others will eventually led to us. So what does this all mean? Here's a thought to carry with you. If classifying these ancient relatives people lived a million years ago depends so much on digital assumptions about tiny bits of bone and how they should curve, how certain can we ever really be about the precise path that led to us? It seems the more details we uncover, the more fundamentally uncertain the grand picture sometimes becomes. 